Welcome to this video of OPC UA. In this video, we'll understand the basic fundamentals of OPC UA. If you have joined my last course on Node-RED Made Easy, you have understand how you can communicate with your hardware using Modbus. So we have covered these topics like Modbus with Delta VLC, also with Siemens VLC. In Siemens VLC, there is an S7 connection. Now there are certain limitation of Modbus. For example, when you communicate via Modbus, there is no security. You don't have to authorize any user who wants to access or write the data. In this case, this becomes a little bit unsafe operation in the industry because if you know the IP address and the port number, you can directly trigger the bits or the registers. Uh, but in case of OPC UA, there is some security layers which are added to make this communication secure. These are not the only benefits. We have a lot to cover in this video. Also in the forthcoming videos in which I will explain you how to use OPC UA client to read the data from the controller or how to make your own OPC UA server. So there are a lot of things we need to talk about. So let's start with what is an OPC UA and I will cover mostly the topic which is related with the PLC. So how to read the data from PLC via OPC UA. This is the main core topic of this whole course. So let's start. So in this presentation, we'll start with what is OPC UA. So OPC UA is an open platform communication which is used for machine to machine communication. All right, and it was developed by OPC Foundation. So for example, we have a machine in the industry and we want to communicate with this machine. So what are the features which OPC UA will bring on the table? The first feature is it has an integrated information model. Now, the model of OPC UA has a standardized structure in which we talk about nodes. So we we need to know the nodes of the data and that's how we used to talk to each other. And every data has a specific node ID and every ID has a specific name, a specific syntax, okay? We will understand that in detail. So this information model, will study how we will study this more in detail when we will create our own server. But in short, I will tell you, it is a standardized information model which is, having, which is following some rules, okay? Second is open source. Now this is an open source technology. You can find uh, open source uh, OPC UA servers, which you can use, or you can find open source OPC UA client, which you can use. Okay, so this technology is open source and you don't have to pay most of the time for these OPC UA base clients. And then secure model, as I told you before, we have some user authorization, which is asked to communicate with OPC US server. So this is more secure compared to Modbus and other connections. Last but not the least, cross platforms. Now this is very important. Now most of the softwares which are coming in the market supports OPC UA. The recent example, I was working with Visual Component, which is a 3D based CAD designing software. And not only you can design your CAD, CAD data, but you can also simulate it with your PLC. So if you see this example, in this case, I'm simulating the skate card data with my PLC. And this is possible because there's an OPC linkage between the software, which is visual component and my hardware. So now the more and more softwares are coming, which provides interconnectivity between the software and the hardware or software and the other software or hardware and the hardware. So this is possible very easily using OPC UA. All right. So let's proceed with the first thing. And I have mentioned a link here, which I will also mention in the next lecture in the article or in a text file. And this video explains more about OPC UA. It's a very nice and short video. I would recommend that you should see this video. So this will clear you some more concept about, about OPC UA. So let's proceed. How OPC is evolved now. I will tell you some basic different types of OPC. So the first one was OPC DA server. It says it defines the exchange of data, including value, time, and quality information. So here we just talk about the data, data and its value, and it's the quality, if it's a good or if it's bad, just the data. Then there's another type called OPC A and E server. It defines the exchange of alarms and event types. So if there is specific alarm in the system or some, some event, this is used to notify those information. So we have OPC DA just for data, the important data, like the sensor data or the actuator data. And for some alarms and even we have OPC A and E. And then we also have OPC HDA server, which has some historical timestamp data in which you mention the timestamp when this thing happened, when this alarm happened, or when this reading is coming, when this reading was changed. So you have a proper time syntax or timestamp for that. So these were the three different types of OPC before OPC UA came 
which includes all of these features. So it has data, which has alarm, it has events, and also it has some timestamps which you need for the data. So that this, this defines complete OPC UA. It's a unified architect. So this UA stands for unified architect. All right, this was a brief about it. I will not go too much theoretical about OPC UA. We will come to some practical exercises. And the next thing is um, some example and application. So for let's say we have a machine and this machine has several sensors and several actuators or some information is coming and this machine wants to share data easily. So how this happens? So in the first step, we have OPC UA server. So let me just take a pen. Uh, I will go to full screen mode and take a pointer on the color I would prefer blue somewhere. Okay, so let's say we have a device with OPC UA server. Now in OPC world, we'll talk about two things. We talk about servers and we talk about clients. If you remember, we had the same same terms in Modbus. We have Modbus server and Modbus mm -hmm. client. And we have discussed Modbus server is which, which holds the data. Similar in this case, we have a device with OPC UA server. Now this device, what is this device? This can be a hardware device, which can be, let's say, IOT device, or it can be an edge server. or it can be a Raspberry Pi, or it can be a computer. So any device which has OPC UA server inside. Now OPC UA server is just a code. It's a, it's a set of codings which are defined in the, in the device. So it's basically OPC UA server, it's not a separate hardware. It's a, just a separate uh, set of programming and co coding inside the device, okay? So when we will create OPC UA server, you will understand what I'm talking about. So let's say we have a device which has OPC US server defined inside, and this device is connected to sensors. So sensors are sending the values to this device. So it has some values about, let's say, temperature, level, whatever. And the status of actuator, if the actuator is on or if it's off, or at what particular speed it's running, if it's uh, some kind of conveyor. Some data could be from Modbus. So let's see it has, so let's see this device is a PLC. This can also be a PLC. And it is reading uh, data from another PLC by Modbus. It has some actuators which are connected. It has some sensors which are connected. And it is also connected via IOLing and reading the value from sensors. Or it could be RFID. So this PLC having so many connections. And let's say it has also a profinet connection which is connected to, let's say, a VFT or a AC or a, maybe it could be a server drive. So it could be any connection, just assuming. And now it also has an OPC UA client. Okay, I'll come to that later, but let's assume it's also connected to OPC UA client. So server is connected to so many uh, devices here, getting the data. Now what happened? Then you have a device with OPC UA client. Now client here is similar to Modbus client, which is used to get the values from the server. It is also used to write the values to the server. So it does both of the operation. Now in this case, client can be a Raspberry Pi, which can also be a server. That's not a problem. It can also be a computer with a Node-RED or any other OPC UA client. So here Node-RED is actually OPC UA client. Node-RED can also be server. So one device can be a server and can be a client as well, okay? Or let's say another client, it's a software automation studio. So you can control your automation studio from what is happening inside your PLC, just for simulation. And let's say visual component, which I explained before, it is also kind of client or UA expert, which I will use most of the time in this course to get the values from the server. So client can be a piece of software. It can be hardware with a software inside to get the values, okay? Now to move the value from server to client, we use a connection which is called OPC UA. So this OPC UA has some information model which is read by the client. So here what, I, what, we are trying, what I'm trying to say is a device which has so many connections, so many data coming in, we define the server inside this device or this device has the server already inside it and then we use a client to use the value. Now this is, you see most of the things here are hardware. So the value coming from your real device, physical environment, 
from PLC, from sensors, from actuators, from Modbus, from Profinet. And here you can see this is these are the software. But this can also be a hardware. But here I'm just giving you an information. To move from digital world to the software world in which you represent the data. We use OPC UA because it's a standardized uniform architecture. And I mentioned here OPC client because this server can also read the data from a client. For example, this client can further send the value to another OPC UA server. Server 2. Client has a capability to read write data from OPC UA server. So it is reading from here. It can also write to there. It can also read write to another OPC UA server. Or it can send it back to the server. So a client can access to multiple servers. Okay. So it has a it can link to more OPC US server and and it can also read the data from here and send it to this server. Or read the data from here and send it to this server. Or read the data from here and send it to this server. So client can pay play a role of sharing the information between different servers. Server alone cannot do that. A client has to let them talk to each other. It will read the value from here, send it to another, read from here, send it to another. So if you have a lot of OPC US servers in your plant or just one UP OPC US server, you have the uh, possibility to interact different devices via OPC UA, via the secure channel. Okay. So let's see what we have. Okay. This is like first the client send the request and then server approve the request and give the response. So when it sends the request, the server checks if there is a proper certification or a proper user authorization, which is valid or not, and then server give the response. Okay. Next was case one. So we'll do some case studies. We'll do take some examples of how OPC US server works with, we'll start with a simulation and then we'll come to the real values. Okay. So we will do this one in the next video. We will see how the OPC US server can be created in your computer. And you can download the software OPC US Server Simulation. It's for free. You can download it in your computer. And I will put the link in, in some text file and you can see that. Okay. So I'll see you in the next video.